we're crossing over to Palestine and we are going to be talking to an activist and an educator in Palestine. He is Baha Hilo and we're going to try and understand what else is going down in that part of the world. Our hearts bleed for Palestine and I'm sure Baha heard those two previous promotions that we played out just now. Africa Muslim agencies urging South African Muslims to dig deep into their hearts and pockets to make a meaningful difference to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And prior to that, the snippet uh, from an interview that I did here in South Africa with a politician, a white politician, mind you, talking about his absolute support for the Palestinian people and calling an end to that genocide. Baha Hilo, Salaamu Alaikum, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for hosting me. Despite all of the uh, killings, the mass murder, different people in different parts of the world are labeling the situation in Palestine. Certain people are calling it genocide. I have given it that label as well. And uh, people in the West are also now talking about it as ethnic cleansing. But call it what you will. It is absolutely horrendous, unforgivable, and the Western world is still either in collusion with this, uh, this genocide or they've just been totally silent about it. Let's start. I, I hope and pray that you are encouraged hearing that you've got support from around the world, including here in South Africa, that our hearts bleed for you. We're making dua and everything we possibly can to make the voices of the Palestinians heard. Thank you. Thank you. The, the positions of uh, white governments remain the same for the past 75 years. They are in complete support of the uh, Israeli apartheid regime. They provide Israeli apartheid regime with diplomatic, economic, and military support. Needless to say that the, the bombs being thrown at Palestinians right now are manufactured in, in Western societies. It, it's a genocide that is being televised before our eyes, and it's a genocide that will go on and on and on until the Israeli savages decided to stop. Can you tell me a little bit about where you are based and how safe or threatened you feel in the tiny little area that you're living in? Give us a bit of background to that. and. Do you also fear that you and your little community might well be attacked sometime soon? Dear, we, we are attacked almost every day. The Israeli army invades every little community inside the occupied West Bank. They have been responsible for murdering nearly 144 different Palestinian civilians, whether by Israeli criminals in uniform, like Israeli soldiers, or Israelis without uniform, like Israeli settlers. Like, uh, Many fascists right, right now are, are emboldened by the genocide that is being carried out on Gaza, and they try to seize the moment by like lynching and murdering whatever Palestinians they get their hands on. There is no safe place. Almost every Palestinian I speak to feels like there is a target sign on their backs or on their heads. Many people are just staying within their reservations because the state of Israel have managed to cut the occupied West Bank into nearly 230 separate uh, areas uh, and the movement from one area to the other is pretty difficult. The Israeli army have been in invading neighborhoods and different communities throughout the uh, occupied West Bank and they have kidnapped and arrested more than 2,000 Palestinians so far. So there is n no such a thing as a safe place that we had in Palestine before, but right now it's even more dangerous and more terrorizing and more scary. Of course, for us in the occupied West Bank, we remain focused on the genocide that's being carried out by the state of Israel in Gaza ghetto or the Gaza Bantustan or the Gaza concentration camp. It kind of like gives us the feeling that whatever sacrifice that happens, it's nothing compared to like the uh, elimination Palestinian families that is being carried out in, in, in the Gaza Strip. Like when you talk about more than 1,031 massacres that are carried out by uh, Israeli criminals right now, when you're talking about like bombing hospitals, schools, water resources, like cutting that population completely out of connection, like with electricity, water, food, supply, like all kinds of things are being cut off from like 2.2 million of us. In addition to like throwing nearly 
25,000 tons of, of explosives upon that uh, population, which is the equivalent of one and a half nuclear bombs so far. So for us, we are taking it in the occupied West Bank. Many people are like uh, taken to the streets, protesting Israeli criminal behavior, and every protest turns into a funeral because Israeli savages, like they, they open fire like at anybody who dares to criticize like or protest against Israeli criminal behavior as being carried out for the past 30 days so far. Baha, earlier on you said to me, and I was wondering, you live very close to the site of where our beloved Nabi Isa Salai Salam was born. And I should imagine that's a very sacred site, not only for Christians, but for Muslims. I'm not sure what's the Jewish position on that site, simply because we do know that they crucified Isa alayhi salam back in the day. Do you believe you're safe because you're very, you live very close to that site? Yeah. Or do these occupiers, these genocidal beasts, not care what, who, where and how? they go about their wholesale destruction they go around and destroying everything like they just bombed the third oldest church on the on the planet in gaza the church of the nativity the heart of the city of bethlehem is also not sacred like they put that church under siege for more than 40 days locked nearly 200 people inside back in the time like that church was uh, under siege three times throughout this 1600 years of history once by the Persians, one by the, once by the Crusaders, and once by the uh, the state of Israel. Like uh, any kind of like outsider that invades this uh, land is obsessed with our uh, holy sites, and the, that obsession is an obsession for destruction. It's not obsession for like respect and so on. Also, mind you, the same town that gave, like witnessed the virgin birth, the same town where Christ, that is, Islam was was born. It's also the birthplace of King David. Like, and King David remains to be an inspiration for Palestinian resistance, uh, where we all view ourselves like when you see our teenagers throwing rocks at military carriers and military tanks, that is how we are inspired by the story of David where he he's the one, a teenager that came out with a stone to defeat Goliath. So, like, the state of Israel has no respect whatsoever for anything in uh, Palestine. If you have no respect for the sanctity of life, then you, you wouldn't care about stones.